This is Lane with Hog Nature Studio. Today we're at the local public house in San Antonio, Florida, and uh, my special guest with me today is Josh Thorne. Josh, uh, you're one of the more accomplished bike racers here in the area. Um, you're, you've, uh, your bike has taken you many places, literally and figuratively. You've, you've been a member of the national team, uh, you've raced in Europe, and now you're here in this lovely metropolis of Pasco County, and uh, I'm just curious how you got there from here. Uh, or got here from there. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I grew up in New England. Uh, went to high school, played hockey, and they uh, ended up having a cycling team. And I progressed from a uh, first bike race crashing to the New England champion at the end of that season as a freshman. So it's kind of kind of made my decision after that to go from hockey, where I was sitting the bench on a really good. Uh, hockey team to New England champion and it was pretty pretty easy to wait in high school especially with which route I learned. So uh, by the time I was a senior in high school I was invited to move out to the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs and be a member of the, the national junior national cycling team. And um, at the end of that year I went to the world championships in Spain and came back with a friend of mine who grew up here. And, uh, that's when I fell in love with the area. We have a lot of rolling small farms here, just nice quiet roads, and uh, the weather. I mean, I'm from New England, so I'm used to just every all crappy weather, especially from November to April. So we're very just challenging weather, and uh, that made me love this area. Just being able to go out riding a bike and not really think about weather and, uh, and all the other stuff. In the so, so, that brought me to this area. The uh, the level of competition. Uh, your peers in this area, is it, does it compare favorably to other areas of the country? And I think so, you know, they always talk through certain areas that are pockets in the country that have a very um, deep um, group in just regards to that there's, there's hundreds of riders. Um, we're a little bit smaller and I noticed Florida is like ever changing. We have a lot of uh, people that come in that are uh, Phil Damon, uh, Bobby Sweeting, you know, um, uh, there's been a lot of guys like that that have come through and come up through this area and um, a lot of them end up progressing and just kind of leaving the area but there's a there's a very consistent local group here which is nice and uh, they're very strong throughout the winter time too which makes it great for training just to be able to go out when you know you're at your weakest as a as a roadie that does the rest of the year there's some strong strong guys here in the winter time which is very beneficial i like it and I noticed uh, also, well, you run a, a cyclocross series, Wicked Awesome Racing Series, um, and I know that helps you all quite a bit as far as your training. Is, is that correct? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it gives us a focus. Uh, this will be our third year uh, starting that. Uh, this year I'm really gunning up to um, go and do Masters Nationals because they're in Nashville this year. Um, and I know there's quite a few other Floridians that are thinking of going up to nationals, and we have a we have our first national champion, uh, Ryan Woodall, um, for cyclocross here. And that's a Floridian. You know, it's kind of crazy, and that's that's a cool um, aspect to show how much growth we've had to have. You know, guys, we have a very small grassroots level. Um, you know, now it's like we have a national champion. We have a, uh, some great races come along. A very consistent series starting up. So it's uh, it, it's pretty cool. It's kind of what. I came from New England where cyclocross was just so entrenched and deep, uh, like in the culture, and it's um, it's cool to see that starting here, and, and you know, there's like the grassroots program, where you can just see that it's starting to branch out, man. and that's, uh, in my opinion, that's something very cool to witness, and you know, yourself as a photographer, you're going to be able to see that, that growth too, it's, it's very, uh, it's a cool feel, you know, it's like you're on the cusp of something, you know, and you're there while it's starting to, to expand, it's, that's neat. Well, I know your series uh, is absolutely very family family friendly. It's it's a fun day when we go out and, cool. and watch you. what you guys do. You and your wife Kaylee do a, a really fantastic job at putting the series on. And I know I've heard from your fellow competitors that your courses are quite hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to hear. Thank you. I mean, I appreciate it. Um, if that was something big that I was really looking to bring um, is the just the quality of the course and the style of the course. Um, I think in the past a lot of people didn't really think it was possible just because of the, I guess you'd say the typical terrain of Florida. 
Um, but like once again, I said our area, we have a lot of rolling hills, we do have some steep stuff too, so it's it's made for some challenging different courses. Uh, like the Birch Park one with the sand. Uh, we're planning on getting a little more sand there this year, but a lot of the sandy corners there, it's like cyclocross in my opinion is always about kind of uh, exploiting what you have in your area. And whether that, you know, New England is mud, it's roots and stuff. So here it's, uh, we have sand. Sand, I, it's harder to me than the mud. The mud's at least predictable, you know. And sand is every time through it, it's, uh, it's a new bag of tricks, so it makes it kind of hard. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you, I'm glad it's, it's uh, the family aspect of it is something that's been, I don't know, kind of a lifelong dream of mine. Uh, you know, my older son's starting to race now. Bentley loves the, the kids' races. And we're really looking forward to this next year doing that. Uh, I'd like to do like a bike safety, um, not really clinic, but uh, when we do the first race up at Stanley Park, there's uh, we're going to get quite a few people involved. I want, you know, the three to eight year olds and families to be coming out and kind of see what we're doing. Uh, that's the biggest thing across here now is just getting the word out. I mean, we have so many cyclists and families and people here, it's just, I don't think they know what's going on. So that's what we're, we're striving for, so. And it's just fun, you know, it's the, the whole, the whole thing with road cycling is, you know, like the guys go away, they go to a race, and, you know, no one else really goes with them, and if the family does come, it's, you know, eight seconds every 45 minutes or something, they may or may not see daddy come by. And, uh, with the way we have things set up in the park with the playgrounds and, you know, having a kid's race, and and hosting it more for a family, it's bring everyone out, you know, and with it being a, you know, a county park like that, it's, it's closed, and that's, that got my son into cycling more than me trying to get him into it, it was just kind of in between the race, you know, the race was the hard part, it was him and the other kids just riding on their bikes, you know, messing around in the park, and kind of made it where he came back and was like, hey, I want to race now. So that's a, I don't know, that aspect of it was really neat, just they had more fun, almost in between the race and the race itself, which is kind of funny, but that's 11 year olds for you, you know, so. Well, that's the photographer I like, because uh, your courses, you can almost see the whole course from one location, so it makes it very easy to cover your events, so that, that's that's always neat as well. That was very important, it's almost, I always compare it to the switch uh, from like motocross to supercross, and um, I that notice that that's what they've been doing in Europe. You know, the courses are tightening up a little bit, a bit more uh, spectator friendly, um, and that just that was important to me as well. Just so it's not so spread out. The, the very first course I did design at San, I was like, I was so excited about the size and the park and everything, and then I wanted to incorporate everything, and uh, it just made for one heck of a loop each, each time. So as a course designer, you had to have some discipline as well. Yeah, a little bit. I had to kind of exclude a couple areas that I was like, okay, it's it's great, but it, you know, it, it takes a minute and a half to get there or whatever, and then, and then hook your way back. And uh, it is, and when, when you kind of take yourself outside of that and, and put yourself as a spectator, it's like, well, what would you want to see? It's, it's pretty neat to stand in one or two areas and know that you can just run a couple hundred meters and then you know, check out the sand pit and then come back to maybe a descent and then a minute and a half later, you know, the guy's in your face climbing, coming up to you. And that's, uh, cycling, especially cyclocross is one of the few aspects of a sport where you can really get that close to the athlete. It's basketball, I mean, you're away. The soccer, you're away. Football, I mean, you have to view it from a different distance. You're not literally, you know, give the guy a high five or something. As he or a cookie hand. Yeah, or a cookie <laughs> or something like that when you're doing a great job. So it's... I think people people love to see that and from both sides. You know, the person kind of running by and, and doing the event, and then the person on the sidelines, you know, politely uh, heckling you along a little bit, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, heckling is another aspect of uh, yeah. <laughs> polite, friendly heckling. Right, it's uh, good natured, right? Yeah, good natured. There you go. I was trying to think of the right term to kind of say it. You know, remember, you might be out there someday too. So it's like, you know, you want some motivation, maybe something mildly funny, but uh, not degrading. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, uh, Josh, do you have anybody that you want to thank, a sponsor you'd like to mention, anything like that? Um, anybody that inspired you to get involved? Well, I'd like you want to say thank my wife. You know, we're kind of keeping things together and keeping things moving forward. She's definitely uh, kept me on the right path and. It made me uh, kind of start to envision a lot of this, which was cool. It was a lot, a lot of it was up here, and um, she's done a heck of a lot of work of getting it 
yeah, I keep pointing to the card, sorry, <laughs> of getting it kind of out there and actually be uh, an actual event. So it's, uh, I'd like to thank her, Julie, the, the local where we're at right now in San Diego, they sponsored our series before. Pro uh, Gold, uh, Lubricants has been a great sponsor for us, Shimano. Um, there's a bike shop right across the street that's helped me out for a number of years, John Sesson with Jovita Cycles. He's been my mechanic off and on since I've been 18 years old. So, you know, wow, that's a long relationship. I always say off because we were at opposite ends of the planet, so it was kind of. <laughs> Kind of hard to get your bike worked on by them, but um, and there's been there's been a, a ton of people that have been involved uh, in my career up to this point. It'd definitely be too many to list, but um, they know who they are. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. They've helped out quite a bit, and uh, it's funny how many people you know like to help because they they see that common vision or the or the work ethic, um, and a lot of times I feel like they're. They're kind of sponsoring that more than, than just you know the end product of giving the product out or something like that. So it's that's been uh, kind of humbling to see that too because it's just being me. I don't know, you know, but it, it's cool that people want to back that. And that's that's inspiring. That keeps me moving forward. Well, you're you're a pretty real and genuine person, and I think that people see see, see that. And, and they definitely want to help you in any way they can, Josh. You, you, you really come across as, as a stand-up guy, and I'm proud to call you my friend. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us today, sir. Thank you very much.